Welcome to part 7 of the SCA 80Q Amplifier Kit Series. In parts 1 through 6, I unboxed the kit, tested and replaced the faulty components, and completed the construction. If you missed those episodes, you may want to go back and check them out. After completing the final assembly in the last episode, I discovered there was a serious problem with distortion. Signal tracing showed that there was a clean signal coming out of both preamplifier boards. Under load, the signal on both amplifier boards at each transistor was distorted. At Q1, the first transistor in the amp boards that the signal encounters. These were the scope readings at the emitter, base, and collector. There was a clean signal coming from the headphone jack, but when a headphone was plugged in, the right speaker switched off as it should, but the left did not. Based on this evidence, I asked viewers what you thought went wrong. A bad power supply, a bad or wrong transistor, a bad or wrong capacitor, a bad or wrong resistor, a bad or wrong diode, or a short somewhere in the amp. I gotta say, I got a lot of good answers, but nobody really figured out what went wrong, which quite simply was my brain. Let me explain. If you saw part two, you know that many of the carbon comp resistors that came with the kit tested badly and I replaced most of them on the preamp and amp boards. Well, it turns out that instead of replacing R20 with the correct 3.3 ohm value, instead I used a 3.3K ohm resistor. The simple mistake meant that many voltages on the amp board were being strangled by a resistance that was 999% too high. You might be wondering why both amp boards weren't working, and the simple answer is that I made the mistake on both boards. Now the reason I say my brain was to fault is that I've made this mistake before. For some reason, when my eyes see 3.3, 4.7, or whatever ohms, my brain wants to add a K for thousands. It's probably because most resistors are thousands of ohms, and my brain is conditioned to expect that. The real answer I was looking for, of course, though, was a bad or wrong resistor. If you didn't guess correctly, don't beat yourself up. This was a tricky one, and despite using a signal generator, multimeter, and oscilloscope, it was a boring visual inspection and component cross-check that ultimately found the issue. Installing the correct 3.3 ohm resistors fixed the distortion issue, but I still had one more problem. A headphone jack that wasn't switching off the left speaker. This amp doesn't have a speaker on-off control, so it relies on the headphone jack to turn off the speakers when a headphone is plugged in. Once again, the problem was found doing a visual inspection. Take a look at the jack. Notice there's a small tab present on the right channel conductors, but not on the left. Looking back at the unboxing in part 1, we can see that the jack came this way. When a plug is inserted, this missing tab allows the conductors to separate and disconnect the speaker. The obvious solution? Tupperware, of course. No, not to keep the jack fresh, but as a source of plastic to make a new tab. First, I cut a small piece, used the tab that I had to mark a template, cut the matching piece out, inserted it into position, and reinstalled the original. Let's do a quick test. Amp sounds good. Volume control works. Balance works. Bass. Treble. Loudness, mono, back to stereo, and a headphone plug switches off both speakers. Nice! I had promised bench test in this episode, but I actually want to save that for a dedicated video. So stay tuned for the final episode, part 8, where I'll talk a little about the four-dimensional feature of this amp and do a complete set of bench tests, including power, frequency response, THD and signal-to-noise ratio, and more. Stay tuned! Looking for a shiny new gadget for your bench? Some good books on electronics, vintage hi-fi or old radios? Indispensable tools, cleaners or other products? Check out my new Amazon shop and help the channel. Lots of great products I actually own, use and recommend. Plus my thoughts on each one. Link in the description. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.